Well, welcome back to 5 Minutes of Theology with Dr. Dan and Pastor Dan. It was Dr. Dan's birthday on Sunday. Happy birthday. Thank you. How old are you? <laughs> 65. 65. Look at how young he yes. looks. Unbelievable. How do you look so young? If you saw my parents, that's <laughs> the youngest people their age I know. So, yeah. Crazy, so, crazy, yeah. crazy. All right. Well, this weekend coming up is Easter. I'm going to be preaching on Philippians 3, 1 through 11. Kind of a lengthy passage, uh, but really good. I can't wait. Uh, verses 1 through 3, I'll probably give the least amount of attention to have my notes right here. So I wanted Dr. Dan just to prepare us for this passage and talk a little bit more about verses 1 through 3. Um, so let me read this passage for you. Here's what he's going to address. Paul says, Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Look out for the dogs. Look out for the evildoers. Look out for those who mutilate the flesh. It's interesting. For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Does it sound like an Easter passage to you? <laughs> That's why we're going to cover the majority of that portion here. Dr. Dan, what do we need to know about this portion of the text? Well, I would say to begin with that, uh, that in verse 1, you've got this transition from what we've talked about uh, before in chapter 2. Uh, I, I don't know that it specifically is addressing anything in that transition except just to kind of turn a, turn a corner um, the the word finally is a translation of a phrase that really just means the remaining thing. He's saying, here's what's left. Uh, so this is not the last time that he says, this is the last thing that's left. Uh, he does it again in chapter 4. But, um, but some people make a big deal about that, but he's just using it as transitional. It's connected to chapter 2. It's connected to chapter 3. Um, but so just sits in between. So it's like the pastor that says, I have one more point. And he gives exactly. you like five more. Five more. Yeah, <laughs> exactly like that. So, um, and remember, this is letter writing. So Paul is writing a letter. So he's not on a word processor kind of typing this out and then saying, oh, that's not where that belongs. And I say finally again, so I'm going to leave it out here. Um, so he's writing a letter on uh, a papyrus you know, document probably. And uh, so he probably thought he was closer to the end than he was. Um, but uh, one thing leads to, leads to another, um, and yeah, it does that for him. So what he says, though, is this is where he's, the first time that we see the imperative where he says, rejoice in the Lord. So you see it again in chapter 4, verse 4. But, uh, but this, is, this is where he says, rejoice in the Lord. And it's not, um, it's not unusual, and it's not... Uh, insignificant that he puts that here uh, at this point in this in this scene. Uh, so he's encouraging them to uh, to rejoice and um, and notice that he doesn't just say mm, uh, do some joy today <laughs> or be happy today. The key part of that is probably in the in the phrase in the Lord more than it is in rejoice. So he is suggesting. As he as he's talked about joy uh, throughout this uh, this passage, this is not joy, joy that comes from just circumstances being what I want them to be, uh, you know, a sense of pleasantness about you know what's happening around me. This is idea that joy is coming from the from the Lord Himself. Uh, this is His joy that we're uh, we're experiencing. And it's the first time he said, "Rejoice in the Lord." So far in this passage, it's the first time that he uses it as an imperative to say, "Okay, guys, uh, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord." So What's says, an imperative, imperative for those who a, may not completely it's a, understand? It's a, com it's a command. So, oh. um, so he's pleading with them. He's he's saying, "Here's something you need to you need to do." Okay. You know, get get on this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's helpful. Um, so that's uh, I mean that's the beginning. I think that's that kind of sets the tone for everything that he that he does uh, throughout uh, this whole passage that you'll be looking at uh, Sunday. So uh, what he says about being saved, about how not to be saved, and how to be saved, all of that is connected to this idea of joy that comes in the Lord, not, not just, hmm, this, is, this is a good life. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, then, then he turns, uh, he turns to say uh, something that I mean, commentaries don't really know what to do with this next part, where where they say, you know, it's uh, trouble, you know, it's not not any, not tr- it's not troublesome for me to say the same things to you, um, but it's safe for you. I think that he's simply just saying, you know, I, I, it's 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 not a problem at all for me to say this again. I need to say it again. And uh, the reason I need to say it again is because it's it's good for you. It's good for you to hear it again, um, and you need you need to be pushed in uh, in these matters. Then you get to the point, you know, the part about the circumcision. Dogs, um, you know, the uh, watch out for the dogs. Watch watch out for the evildoers. Watch out for the uh, for the mutilation. He says. So um, this is the word that's off. The watch out part is um, it's just the word to look. To, to see, but in this context, it's obvious that he's saying to not just look at these people, um, but to watch out for them. They, uh, they, they're, they're a problem, they're a problem for you, so, uh, so, so pay, pay attention to them, stay, stay away from them, I think is what he's saying. Um, so, um, you know, he introduces them as dogs, which is not a, you know, not, you know, not a good term. Yeah. Um, but um, but but then he talks about the circumcision. Do you want me to talk about the circumcision? Briefly. You want me to. So. I do, just a tad. Uh, I know it's a little longer um, than five minutes, but I think it's worth it. Uh, so the uh, the word that's translated circumcision is the is the Greek word peritome. Uh, so it, so it literally means to cut around, which kind of really kind of highlights what circumcision is. It's the typical word that's used to refer to uh, to that religious practice. And um, then he uses the word mutil- mutilation to refer to the Judaizers, the people who are who are practicing circumcision and saying that that's required for someone to be uh, to be a follower of Christ. Um, so um, we we refer to them, Paul refers to them as uh, Judaizers. So, so they're making the Jewish religious religion and the practice of that religion uh, kind of a part of what it means to be saved. And uh, so Paul speaks about such people in very un- very certain terms. Uh, he speaks very negatively about such people, for example, in Galatians. Um, but the word that he uses here in regard to mutilation is a play on the word for uh, for circumcision. So instead of peritome, he uses the word katatome, which means to cut off. And so he's saying that these these people, you know, they're just they're just cutting flesh. That's all they're doing. They're not really accomplishing anything uh, spiritually uh, by doing this. So it's just you know it's just. You know, mutilating the flesh. It's just, you know, I th- I think he's saying similar to what he says in Galatians, when he says, "I wish they'd go ahead and just, you know, take care of the business fully." Just, so just cut it off. Yeah, cut it I off. Love Greek. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so then he goes from there to talk about, uh, you know, what I what I say is, you know, his own religious pedigree, and um, and he and he says. What what I what I bring to the table in regard to who I am, and so he talks about things related to who who he is as a good Jew, his pedigree, you might say, and uh, the things that he's accomplished um, because of that practice of that religion, um, and and he says very clearly these these don't these work. Don't these, save me. these don't save me. These don't uh, accomplish. Um, uh, salvation for uh, for me. Well, I'm going to stop you right there. I hope this helps you a little bit. Just look at the text, prepare for what's to come. Really, this weekend, the whole passage is about what what it does not mean to be a Christian and what it does mean to be a Christian. So there's going to be a, a time for us to ask if people want to give their life to the Lord. Uh, if you have friends who don't come to church, don't know the Lord, I really highly encourage you to invite them. Uh, check out this passage, study verses 1 through 3, but really the meat of the passage too is in verses 4, 4 through 11, and we'll be spending time there. I hope this helps you a little bit, uh, helps you out a little bit, and uh, hope you have a great week. We'll see you this Easter.